Members of your Missoula City Band, Bill Roach here say welcome to our penultimate concert, our second to the last concert. That's the only time I use that word once every year about this time. It's second to the last. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand as we play our national anthem? birthdays today. Uh, first one is Mike Rosbarski. Mike's in our euphonium section. In addition, he's a talented composer, arranger, pianist, singer, and take it from me, heck of a barbecue chef. Good stuff. Mike's celebrating the 30th anniversary of his 39th birthday. Happy birthday, Mike. And and in addition, we have our own Don Gieselbeck in the trombone section. Now, he's got an ice pick. He's got an ice pick. His tradition, or what he does, or whatever you want to call it, a sickness. He goes out and skis or climbs ice cliffs or something on his birthday. He's done it every year since probably he was 50. It's since 29. He is 50 years old. All right. So happy birthday, Don and Mike. Let's meet him, Gary. since the 2003 season we played a different George Rosencrantz march 
I don't want to get you upset, but I think we're down to only about five and a half years left, unless I find some more. Tonight we've got a new one. It is the Depot Band March. This one is written in 1914. It's probably one of his more technically difficult ones. So I think good thoughts, and we're going to do George Rosencrantz Depot Band March. Let's see, coming next on our stage, we're so happy to have them. Uh, been with us a while. Ken Colson and Karen Callan. It's getting to be quite the tradition to have these two friends of the same band together on our next to last concert and a tradition more than worthy to continue well into the future. Both Ken and Karen avail themselves as in demand singers to many venues around town. Ken works at and Karen teaches music in the Missoula County Public School System. Tonight we're going to sing selections from Franz Lehmer's operetta, The Merry Widow. Please welcome Karen Colson and Karen Callan.
sweet but completely bizarre All that endless pentafel and farce Why can't they be more like us? All the gondola, a gondola joy Or a monster who wants to destroy Whether wild as a meat or a child or a beast Who can tell what to do? Secrets of a woman who can tell their perpetual enigmas, unpredictable. Oh well, how to keep them? How to keep them? That's the secret. That's the trick. And there's such a mix of attributes a man has to take his pick. Why do we ever know what they are? It's because we're completely bizarre We're beguiled by the smile in their eyes Then hello, surprise, surprise They're a wonder, a bundle of joy Not a monster who wants to destroy We may think she meets, but she's wise as a sweet And it's clear what It's clear what a woman thinks.
Thank you, Ken and Karen. Wonderful. Well, we're going to have our Band-Aid gals come out amongst you. You folks have always been so generous to Heather and Leslie and Jennifer and Janelle. We keep switching this up, so I don't quite get the names every time. Anyway, keeps me sharp. Or not. Next up, we've got a tribute to Louis Armstrong. Louis Daniel Armstrong, nicknamed Satchmo or Pops, was an American jazz trumpeter and singer. Coming to prominence in the 1920s as a cornet and trumpet player, Armstrong was a fundamental instrument influence on jazz, shifting the music's focus from collective improvisation to solo performers. With his distinctive gravelly voice, Armstrong was also an influential singer. His career spanned the 20s to the 70s, and cr critic Steve Leggett describes Armstrong as perhaps the most important American musician of the 20th century. Here's our salute to this wonderful American talent. This is tribute to Louis Armstrong.
Yeah, I got a couple things. Hey, you know, there's lemonade over here, always available, 50 cents right over here, these, these kids in the corner. So if you've got some thirst out there, come see them. Also, last week, someone left uh, a Fujifilm camera here. I'd turn it on, but I don't know how to. But if it was you last week, come on up. Maybe I should look at some of the pictures. No, I don't know how to do that either. Oh, is it yours, Jay? No, okay. And, and a shout out, we had a, an unofficial uh, uh, alumni group and I've got uh, alumni here in the band and a bunch of kids we had dinner with uh, and just getting to be so old, uh, but uh, a bunch of kids that were all playing the Big Sky Band when I taught out there together. So thanks for having you here, Stephanie and who else is here? Uh, Annie and probably a bunch of kids and family. Good to have all you kids here and Heather in the band. Okay, Roach, I'm, I'm out of here. Promise? <laughs> Uh, taking the podium now is our guest conductor. We're going to get, we're going to take a break from Gary or give Gary a break. I'm not sure for this evening. We have Deb Nelson Rosbarski. She's played saxophone, euphonium, clarinet with the city band as well as conducted. She plays with MCT and community concert band and probably a couple of groups I can't remember. She's a music teacher in Charlotte, Montana. And let's see, she's chosen to lead us in a very majestic piece for band. This is called Processional by British composer Philip Spark. Thank you, Deb.
Thanks, Dev. Now on our stage, or coming on our stage, is Emily Peregrine. Emily will be starting her senior year at Hellgate High School this fall. I'm going to go on record now and predict a wonderful career in music for Emily. After you hear this young lady sing, I'm sure you'll agree that you can all say that I knew her when. Singing I Dreamed a Dream from the first act of Les Miserables, please give a warm city band welcome to Miss Emily Peregrine.
Zabarski, Mr. Birthday himself. What a, what a great job, Emily. Thank you so much. Ah, Frederick Alton Jewell, known as the March King of Indiana, was born in 1875 in Worthington, a prolific musical composer who wrote over a hundred marches. At the age of 16, Jewell ran away from home and joined the Gentry Brothers Dog and Pony Show as a euphonium player. Yes, there is actually a real dog and pony show. They used to have that. It means something different to me, but I, back then I think it actually meant a dog and pony. They had ponies and dogs and things. Mm -hmm. later, he later had his own music publishing company, is generally considered one of America's top band uh, composers. Uh, I happen to know the director in Brazil, Indiana, who owns the copyright to all of Fred Jewell's uh, marches, and I can get more Fred Jewell marches than I would ever imagine. <laughs> So, you know, when we run out of Rosencrantz, we'll probably do French school. Anyway, here's New Friendship March by Frederick Alton. people in my section are making me laugh because the next thing is the whiffin song. <laughs> They're making fun of the name. They know I have to say it. <laughs> okay. The Yale Open Poofs are the oldest college a cappella group in the United States established in 1909. Are there any Yale alumni out there?
I, I've walked around the campus a couple of times. All right. This group comprises college senior men who compete in the spring of their junior year for 14 spots available within the group. The WIFA moves have performed for generations at a number of venues, including the Lincoln Center, the White House, Soap Lake Tabernacle, Oakland Coliseum, Carnegie Hall, and the Rose Bowl. The group has also appeared on television shows such as Jeopardy, The Today Show, Saturday Night Live, 60 Minutes, Gilmore Girls, and the West Wing. We don't have them here tonight. <laughs> but we are going to play the Whiffin song. Next week's concert, well, we've advertised uh, Gary Herbie, but I understand he's not going to be able to make it, Gary, is that right? That's right, Gary. Yeah, I know it. Gary's health is, uh, it's, it's better now, though he's not able to travel. He was in earlier this, uh, this summer, and uh, he's working on it. He's uh, going to lose a bunch of weight and stop smoking. And then hopefully he'll be back with us for next year. But, but in lieu of Gary, trying to figure out somehow to, to finish up headline of the final concert without that amazing musician. Uh, yeah, we've been brainstorming kids and uh, we've got not, not just one or two, but three tubas that will be here next week. Uh, our own Ben Kirby, yeah, my boy, and then the uh, professor of tuba at Eastman School of Music will be here and, uh, and we're going to anger every trumpet player ever everywhere in the world and play Bugler's Holiday next week with with three tubas. So, I've never done it. And I've done it with trombones and horns. I've done it with uh, cornets, yeah. I've done it. We even did it with three soprano saxophones one year. You remember that one? Oh my gosh. I couldn't show my face for a week. But ne next week we'll be with three tubas. It'll be amazing. I think also next week that we'll uh, going to bring old Jay back up on stage and he's going to play some early rock and roll with us. And uh, uh, yeah, we all love Jay when he comes up.
So don't miss it. It's our final concert next week. And my mom will be here. So I was out really soliciting, making sure that my mom next week, just say, just please say something nice to her about me. Okay? Play. You can really help me out. I appreciate it. You don't have to lie if you don't want to. You know, Gary, I could sing a whiffin' poof song if you want to next thing. Well, let's see, before I was so rudely interrupted, ladies and gentlemen, we're at our last number for this evening. We'd like to thank our solas, Ken Colson, Karen Callan, and Emily Perrigan. Ken and Karen are joining us for our last number. This is Gary's favorite musical, and he's not alone there. Uh, Ken and Karen are going to sing selections from Rodgers and Hammerstein's Oklahoma. Uh, on behalf of Gary and the band, good night everybody and we'll see you here next Wednesday at 8 o'clock for our ultimate concert. Now, Ken and Karen and Oklahoma.
you so much. See you next week, folks.